everyone and welcome to Museums Under the Spotlight. I am Alina Dima, your host, and today I am really pleased to invite you to join me on a journey with the time machine straight to the Middle Ages. We will visit together one of the largest castles in Europe. The Corvin Castle, or the Hunyad Castle, is one of the most impressive medieval constructions in Romania, situated in Hunedoara County in Transylvania. This castle is one of the ten most fairy tale like constructions of this kind in the world, so please join me as we enter the world of noblemen and ladies, and most of all, of everlasting legends. This magnificent Gothic castle with its drawbridge over a rushing river leaps from all your favorite fairy tales, taking you back in time, just meters away from the modern city of Hunedoara. The beautifully preserved structure features a sumptuous knight's hall, high buttresses, inner courtyards, a chapel and some 50 rooms resemblant with medieval art. It seems that even Jules Verne included the Corvin castle in his novelistic itinerary. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the Hunyad castle, where together with our wonderful host Sorin Tinku, we are going to discover a lot of interesting details regarding the history of this magnificent castle and of course the legends that traveled through time and space and still are mentioned even today. Uh, hello and thank you so much for having us here today. Hello, you are very, very welcome at Funedora. It's uh, really wonderful to be in front of a uh, of such an amazing architectural ensemble, uh, this medieval castle. And I would like you to tell us the history of the Hunyad castle. Yes, indeed, you have right. Imagine to wake up in every morning in the front of this uh, monument. Uh, beside that, regarding the, the history of uh, this uh, construction, uh, it was made in uh, several phases. Uh, the first phase uh, was made in uh, 14th century when the uh, Hungarian king decided to make in here a small fortress with an ellipsoidal shape. Uh, that fortress is today, today disappeared because during the time, in the time of the, uh, of the Corvins and uh, after that, uh, the castle expanded and uh, gradually uh, that uh, small fortress from uh, 14th century disappeared. Practically today, marks of that first fortress from Hunedoara, you can see on that tower, that uh, painted tower, uh, this fortress, uh, as you can see, was not made on the top of the hill, but uh, on a terrace of this uh, stream. It was very important uh, that uh, this fortress to be very close to the city and to the roads that are leading from uh, Hunedoara into the mountains uh, to the iron mines. Actually, the German name of uh, Hunedoara is Eisenmarkt or Iron Market, uh, because uh, Poena Ruska mountains are very rich in this kind of ore, and uh, during uh, its existence, uh, uh, Hunedoara was uh, very tight connected with the met metallurgy of uh, uh, iron. So, um, uh, this fortress uh, was uh, given as a present by the Hungarian king uh, Sigismund of Luxembourg to a Romanian uh, nobleman called uh, Voiku. Uh, this present uh, was given as, let's say, a result uh, for uh, the braveness of this guy uh, into the battles serving the Hungarian king. Uh, after his death, uh, the fortress became uh, finally property of his uh, older son, John Hunyadi, which is the most important uh, figure uh, uh, connected with this castle. Uh, like his father, John Hunyadi was serving the Hungarian king in his part of his existence. And uh, starting with uh, 1440, he became gov uh, ruler of uh, Transylvania. And of course, he has the political and economical power to make a new fortress in here. Uh, this new uh, fortress made uh, uh, in uh, that period uh, had seven towers. Uh, for the first time into a uh, fortification system, John Hunyadi used circular towers in this uh, uh, region, uh, because until now we had into this kind of fortification systems only uh, rectangular towers. Because of the development of uh, uh, um, fire weapons, uh, first in uh, Western Europe ap appeared these kind of uh, uh, towers and for sure John Hunyadi saw the, uh, the advantage of this new system because he traveled a lot in, in Europe 
uh, serving the Hungarian king, Sigismund of Luxembourg. And he applied this new system in Transylvania, first time in, uh, into this castle in uh, Hunedoara. Uh, this first stage uh, made by John Hunyadi was uh, finished in 1446, uh, the moment when he became governor of Hungarian kingdom. That was uh, possible because the Hungarian king, Vladislav I, uh, died uh, uh, during a battle with the Turkish army in Varna, in today's Bulgaria. And the Hungarian consul decided to choose John Hunyadi governor. So, uh, practically, uh, he became the most important uh, man in, uh, in the state. Uh, starting with 1446, we are uh, talking about uh, uh, a castle with uh, 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 bedrooms, with uh, council halls, with uh, very beautiful dining rooms, and a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, luxurious uh, uh, stone elements. So basically, now we are start, starting to talk about the official residence of uh, Prince John Hunyadi. Uh, not necessarily the official residence, because uh, actually uh, the documents attested as the most uh, used uh, city by this guy, uh, Timisoara. He was a very active person. He uh, uh, developed very much the, the exploitation of salt, uh, developed uh, the, uh, the mining of uh, iron and uh, uh, silver and gold. He was in, but in the same time, he was very close connected with the realities in the south of Danube because he had the plan to push back the Turkish Empire. So it was a very active person and uh, he, traveled, he traveled a lot. So we can find uh, John Hunyad in, let's say, northern Transylvania, in Hunedoara, in Timisoara, and in the same time in uh, what is today uh, uh, Hungary. So he was omnipresent exactly. and a very, very important historical figure of his times and not only of his times, because we talk about him even today. Yes, for sure. Uh, actually, uh, uh, his victory uh, against the Turkish Empire uh, was very important for Christianity. Uh, it was uh, uh, very important for the morale of the uh, Christianity because uh, uh, after the uh, falling of Constantinople, uh, everybody were worried. The Turkish Empire started to conquer gradually the south of Danube and uh, the objective was uh, clear for all of, of the Europeans of, of, or the Christians that was to conquer Vienna. So the, the, this victory uh, was so important uh, uh, for the Christians and was a very powerful impulse to uh, start uh, 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 raising uh, new armies of crusaders. Getting back to the actual castle, uh, I was wondering what is the architectural style of this magnificent medieval castle? We have actually uh, uh, three styles combining in this castle. First, we are talking about Gothic style. Uh, after that, we are talking about Renaissance. And finally, we can find in here uh, uh, Baroque uh, elements. So uh, uh, this castle, meaning the combinations of three styles, uh, which are overlapped by neo-Gothic style uh, made in the uh, 19th century during the restoration works. Uh, as far as I understood, at some point during history, the castle was destroyed by natural forces. What exactly happened then? Uh, several times the castle burned. The most uh, important uh, fire was in the uh, 19th century, more precisely in uh, 1st April uh, 1854, when the castle was hit by lightning and uh, burned completely. Uh, the, new, uh, the newspapers from that moment are talking about uh, continuously uh, fire for uh, two weeks. So uh, a lot of uh, wood elements, original wood elements from 15th century uh, 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 were lost during that fire. It is considered that the only wood uh, element which is still preserving, uh, preserved in the castle from 15th century is uh, the gate of the dungeon. 
ironically, the dungeon was the safest place in the castle, uh, at least in uh, the middle of the uh, 19th century. Or at least when it comes to the fire, because That's otherwise true. the dungeon isn't really a happy place. <laughs> Let's call it that way. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, um, the castle practically uh, uh, suffered during its existence a lot of transformations, starting with this uh, late Gothic style made uh, uh, in the time of John Hunyadi, uh, over overlapped by Renaissance style uh, elements uh, made in the time of Matthias Corvin, John Hunyadi's son, uh, and uh, uh, completed, let's say like that, uh, by the late Renaissance and early Baroque uh, elements made in 17th century, when the owner of the castle was Gabriel Bethlen, uh, the Prince of Transylvania. And uh, uh, here in Hunedoara, he made uh, this outside yard, uh, he made the actual bridge, and uh, uh, also he made a palace in the inside of the castle. talking about the Corvin family and inevitably we have to discuss about the most important figures in the Corvin family. We talked about John Hunyadi but we also have Matthew Hunyadi or Matej Corvin as we know him here in Romania. So tell me more about their personalities and uh, I am curious to know afterwards about the legends concerning the family. Uh. I will start with the last part <laughs> of your phrases, with the legends uh, regarding the name of this family, but, uh, because we are talking uh, first about uh, Hunyadi family, and after that we are talking about the Corvin family. The exactly. name changed. Uh, the legend is saying that um, the uh, Hungarian king Sigismund of Luxembourg was uh, traveling in Transylvania, and he had a romantic adventure with, um, uh, a, a, let's say, a princess from this uh, part of the kingdom called Elizabeth Morsinai, or Elizabeth Marginanu, as uh, is uh, known in Romania. Um, when the uh, king left Transylvania, he, do he gave to this young lady a ring, and uh, the legend is saying that the ring had to belong to the unborn child, to be recognized later on the royal court. Uh, after uh, uh, several years, uh, the child, which was um, uh, uh, big enough to, to um, follow his father in, uh, on a hunting trip, I'm talking about John Hunyadi, was playing uh, with this ring uh, into a forest, and the legend is saying that uh, a raven, attracted by the shining of this jewel, stole the ring from the boy's hands. Uh, he knew, John Hunyadi knew the importance of this ring for his future and for his family, of course, and cried for help, and his uncle, with a bow and an arrow, uh, killed the bird and uh, took back the ring. Uh, the legend is saying that uh, Sigismund of Luxembourg, impressed by this story, uh, donated to this family as a coat of arms, the raven with a ring in its beak. And starting with this moment, we are talking about the Corvin family after the name in Latin of raven, which is Corvus. And since we are talking about legends and mysteries, of course, this is a really interesting subject, a really interesting topic, and everybody is fond of legends and mysteries and secrets. Um, tell me, uh, what was the relationship between Vlad the Impaler and the Corvin family? And what are the legends behind this possible relationship? Uh, lately, it's one of the most searched, let's say like that, uh, legends uh, regarding uh, this ruler of Valachia, Vlad uh, the Impaler. Vlad Dracu was in a military and political alliance with John Hunyadi to fight against the Turkish Empire. Uh, of course, uh, after uh, uh, Vlad Dracul's death, uh, his uh, son, uh, Vlad the Impaler, was sustained to be the next uh, 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 ruler and of course uh, John Hunyadi was and after that Matthias Corvin uh, searched for an alliance because uh, uh, 
regarding these military campaigns in the south of Danube, uh, an alliance with uh, Wallachia was uh, very important. We were talking earlier about Matia Corvin, uh, or Matei Corvin, as we know him here in Romania. He was king of Hungary, but apart from that, uh, he was fond of arts and culture. And as far as I know, uh, thanks to him, uh, an unbelievably beautiful project developed, and that is regarding a library, uh, a very comprehensive lamp, uh, library. Tell me more about that, uh, and how did that project develop in, in his times? Uh, the period when Matia Corvin ruled is now uh, known as the period uh, with uh, the advance of the Renaissance into the Hungarian kingdom. In this period, uh, uh, Matia Corvin uh, tried to uh, uh, create a very large and uh, a very well-informed, let's say, like that library. It was uh, named uh, Biblioteca Corvina, uh, and uh, in uh, its time was one of the most important uh, uh, private libraries from at least uh, South uh, Eastern uh, Europe. Uh, beside that, for uh, the Romanians, actually. Um, Matia Corvin is very important because uh, uh, in the spirit of the Renaissance, everybody tried to make a connection with um, uh, a family from the Roman um, Empire. Uh, so in this fashion, uh, Matia Corvin exploited uh, his, uh, let's say, uh, Romanian and in the same time Latin uh, uh, part and um, uh, Starting with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, this uh, middle, late 15th century, uh, uh, the people start to, to discuss about uh, the nobility of the Romanians, about the connection of the Romanians with the uh, descendants of the Romans that conquered Dacia. So, uh, in the same time, Matia Corvin sustained uh, uh, the development of uh, uh, the orthodoxism uh, in the surrounding of uh, Cluj, so at least for us, for the Romanians, uh, Matia Corvin was and in the same time should be a very important uh, king. When we are talking about the medieval times and of course about a castle that resides from that era, we can never have enough in storytelling about legends and also about love stories. So I was really, really curious to know if we can somehow relate the two, the legends and the love stories. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, uh, inside of this uh, castle we have a lot of legends connected with this kind of love stories, but uh, uh, in the same time legends connected with uh, bloody uh, events that took place in here, or in a case a picture between these uh, two kind of, of legends. Uh, I will insist first um, um, on uh, the legends which are connected with the castle, and finally, to end in a, let's say, romantic uh, atmosphere, to talk about the love stories uh, uh, from, uh, from this monu monument. Uh, regarding the castle, uh, one of the most important uh, legends uh, legend, uh, is the legend of the well. Uh, the leg this legend is saying that the well was made by three Turkish prisoners. 
uh, who John uh, Hunyadi promised uh, freedom after uh, they finish uh, this work to dug the well. Uh, animated by this objective to, to, to become a free man, uh, the, these uh, prisoners dug for 15 years in the limestone because the castle is set on a mountain of limestone. And uh, uh, after 28 meters deepness, they reach water. But in that moment, John Hunyadi was dead. And uh, the legend is saying that his wife, Elizabeth Silagi, said that she made no promise and uh, uh, called the guardians and ordered them to kill these prisoners. One of these Turks, uh, like a last request, uh, he uh, asked the right to write something on the wall of the, this well. And the legend is saying that he wrote the words, you may have water, but you have no soul. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, person, Elizabeth Silagi, is also connected with another legend, which uh, was happening, ha happening in uh, the chapel of this castle made by John Hunyadi after 1446. Uh, the legend is saying that, uh, again, this woman, Elizabeth uh, Silagi, uh, uh, had an argue with the stone workers from the chapel. He called again the soldiers and asked them to, to put this uh, stone worker in, into the, the dungeon. And the, dur during the night, uh, the, the worker paid the guardians and uh, uh, escaped from this castle. And finally, he ran from Transylvania. But before that, he warned everybody about uh, what happened to him in here and asked all the uh, uh, workers from the guilds of uh, stone workers uh, to not come in Hunadwara to finish his work. And the legend is saying that from this reason, the balustrade of the chapel was never finished. And um, finally, to, re uh, to, to end in a more uh, romantic uh, atmosphere, uh, we have in um, 16th century, in the middle of 16th century, a love story inside this castle. Uh, in that moment, the owner of the castle was Turok family. Uh, John Turok uh, was uh, uh, fighting with the Turkish armies nearby Deva, 18, 18 kilometers from here. And somehow he heard that, he, that his wife, uh, Barbara was her name, had a romantic adventure with a soldier from this castle. Uh, when he heard that, he turned back to Hunadwara very quickly with a small group of soldiers decapitate both in the yard of the castle and after that uh, went back to Deva to finish his business in there. So uh, we are talking actually about bloody romance, <coughs> not necessarily a romantic love story with a happy ending. Yes, but, uh, but until that moment it was a romantic story. Do we have also happy endings here at the castle? The happy ending story is the love story between Elizabeth Morsinai or Elizabeth Marginano with uh, uh, Sigismund of Luxembourg, the Hungarian king. Due to this uh, legend, um, uh, Matia Korvin is, uh, let's say, a legal descendant uh, by this king, uh, Sigismund of Luxembourg. And the whole history of the Korvin family actually begins and has its b uh, birthplace in this love story. Exactly, exactly. So perhaps we can tell that this first love, sto love story from, uh, uh, not necessarily from this castle, but, but from uh, uh, this uh, uh, place uh, ended uh, happily. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that you have enjoyed this magnificent trip through medieval times and you were captivated by the acts of bravery and the great historical figures of the Corvin family and, of course, the legends. Transylvania and the Hunyad Castle are right here waiting for you to discover and explore them. So, until next time, remember to make your life a beautiful story.